For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. The purpose of this documentary, the purpose of this short documentary, short film, is to bring light to my situation uh, and justice as well. Uh, and to not just me, but to many others who may be going through this injustice and um, who are being quietly swept away with no voice um, and no one to help you and no one to save you. I'm going to demonstrate slightly on how I was able to represent myself after almost being railroaded by my lawyer and an attempt railroading by the public defender's office which I did not want to do, uh, be railroaded. And I foreknew this uh, on my uh, date of arrest which was uh, in November 2018, November the 6th. And um, I was forced to bond out of prison. Um, my arrest was at Southern University where I attend school where I'm now a graduating senior uh, this fall in mass communications journalism. Um, <clears throat> the day when I was arrested on campus uh, I called Come Get Me Bail Bond, and they were uh, very assistant in helping me uh, get my freedom back. Um, they're very good people. Um, shout out to Come Get Me Bail Bond. If you're ever in the state and you need a, a very uh, good bondsman or bondswoman, Come Get Me Bail Bonds would be the number one call for you to make. So after I bond out of prison, um, I knew that, hey, I could beat this because uh, when I was arrested, the officers said they never saw the video. And in my mind, you know, there's videos everywhere. There's videos everywhere. Uh, and at the uh, place of the incident was Capital Area Transit System. And the incident was I was attacked. I was attacked by a bus driver, a bus operator. And the entire time, um, this video has been edited and framed for my arrest and my conviction. And um, when I hired my lawyer after I was arrested in February, about two months after, uh, he wanted up front half of the money. And uh, I paid him, of course, uh, $1,500. And then my only request was that he get the video footage that I needed to exonerate myself and he strung me along for about a year and uh, I basically got frustrated with going to court back and forth with motions with him um, advising me to take probation and he's never filed one subpoena so I eventually had to fire this man and we went on record and he gave me my refund back uh, we did some research on him and it turns out uh, he lost the ability to practice law here in the state and his father went along to do uh, federal time uh, for fraud. So uh, it's very ironic that the uh, judge, Bo Hickenbacker, who's over my case, he's also on the disciplinary board for uh, lawyers, which uh, for me just uh, raised question, you know, can you get favors done for lawyers, you know, who may have have infractions or may have made mistakes? Can you do favors for these lawyers and could these lawyers in return do favors for you? You know, such as railroading people like myself. And I'm just demonstrating how the wheels turn, why the wheels of justice turn slow and why they even turn backwards sometimes. So um, after that speculation, I fired my lawyer. Uh, immediately, I began to file subpoenas and uh, get this video footage. And uh, those subpoenas read, Dear Honorable Judge Bro Hickenbacker, this is the second formal written request to subpoena the following documents. The August 30th, 2018 Capital Area Transit System raw surveillance footage above the employee entrance in the boarding area, bird's eye view ceiling camera, north side of the passenger boarding area, facing Florida Boulevard. Time duration 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, number two, the Capital Area Transit System, number 10, Scholarville Bus, 
raw footage of the operation of the number 10 Scotlandville bus well prior to the time of the incident exhibiting efficiency of the back door working and the time duration ranging from 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and the incident occurred uh, because the bus driver he uh, chose to let me stay on the back of the bus and inconvenience me when he's been opening the back door for the passengers the whole trip to the terminal and um, after he uh, inconvenienced me and you know he didn't offer me to come up front or anything he passively aggressively brushed me off it don't work after lying to me you know I felt very disrespected and uh, I got off the bus and I had some choice words for him but hey once again we got Baton Rouge police they're always on detail at the bus terminal and you have private security who's always there at the bus terminal and once again there's cameras everywhere so I with intentions to put my hands on nobody this man when he responded he did not respond professionally and uh, handle the matter and get me uh, prohibited from riding the bus and definitely for my profanity towards him uh, you know he basically responded you know as if he was you know um, not a bus driver you know he didn't have any type of uh, any type of uh, professionalism about it you know at the end of the day he attacked me he walked up on me after he hit it after he hit me I go backwards and as you can clearly see this man is in pursuit of uh, of me and I had to uh, ward him off with my backpack I did everything I could I back paddled in front of the bus I back paddled on side of the bus and that's when he's chased me and that's when the fight was on and I had to defend myself and that's what I told the arresting officers at Southern when they arrested me after they wrestled me down and, you know, handcuffed me and they stood me up. And I told them, listen, I'm not going to let somebody put their hands on me. You know, nobody's going to walk up to me and put their hands on me. That's just not going to happen. And that's what he chose to do. He hurt his knee. I didn't even physically hurt him at all when it came to the fight. 
he hurt his knee when he went down. And now I'm supposed to be to blame because the corporations don't want to maybe pay this man his work his workers comp or there may be a dispute between the operator now and the corporation but the bottom line is I'm a passenger and my civil rights have been completely uh, undermined my civil rights have uh, not been uh, noted by the judge who's over my case and the, the district attorney who's over my case as well as the police who's testifying uh, over the past 12 months in pretrial uh, as well as the alleged victim the plaintiff in uh, this case uh, the video which I've subpoenaed obviously was edited it was chopped uh, as you can see it did not pull uh, it did not show the arrival of the bus it did not show the exit of both parties the alleged victim and the defendant you don't see the events leading up to the physical altercation it's been chopped on who assaulted who that's part chopped out gone and all you'll see is the incident already underway taking place you see the fight already taking place as this man drove me backwards for a matter of 20 plus feet and this uh, video has been framed uh, to serve me up eight years and drop me down a hole to silence me for yet another uh, clash action settlement from the corporations capital area transit system and these are how the wheels turn uh, you have the corrupt uh, officials in uh, the judicial department, you have the uh, corrupt corporations, and you have the corrupt individuals in law enforcement. And you have the, uh, you have the citizens in between, and they're just, you know, like a uh, ping pong ball, you know, they're just getting slapped everywhere. Your lawyers aren't there, you know, uh, and when you're forced to defend yourself, you know, they can undermine the Constitution because they feel like nobody's looking and they feel like no one cares about you. And um, that's 2021, July the 7th, upcoming. My trial date is set um, unconstitutionally, due process, uh, Brady violations. Uh, it's just a mess, you know, and they're attempting to silence me just as well as they have attempted to silence their workers. Uh, as you know, Katz is engaged in a uh, class action settlement where they uh, violated, once again, constitutional rights of their workers. Their workers' rights were uh, violated because they spoke out. They spoke out on some of the unsafe things and, and the policies there that need to be changed. And no one's uh, listening and um, you're going to have incidents like this uh, when um, things aren't ran correctly. Um, unfortunately for the alleged victim he hurt his knee and unfortunately for me uh, I've been going through hell and back um, and when I say hell and back you know I've also had an attempt on my life where I felt I was poisoning by the powers that be where I walked into a convenience store and uh, I was poisoned uh, this was uh, July the 31st 2020 and uh, I walked into a local convenience store at the Kangaroo Station on Plank Road, right on side the daiquiri shop. Everybody in town knows where it is. And uh, I bought a bottle of vodka, Absolute. The packaging on it was suspect. I didn't really trust it. But hey, I thought it was all good because it's coming from behind the counter. It has a government seal on it that's um, endorsed by the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm Agency. So I trusted it. And those are the people who I hold accountable because I took three sips of that and I don't remember one thing. All I can remember is bits and pieces of that night as time goes on because I was drugged and I don't drink with people. I drink by myself. I don't drink around crowds in social settings. And um, I was drugged, I feel, based on foreknowledge of my situation knowing I have a class action settlement and knowing not only that now I've been arrested and thrown in prison 
for a crime which I didn't commit and I know basically enough to where people could lose their jobs and they should you know because of the treatment and the wrongdoing that I've been going through and nobody's here to save me but I know I pray to uh, a loving God and a, 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 I trust in the most high and I commit my ways to him he who created the sun the moons the oceans the stars you know the heavens you know that's who I pray to most people call them Allah Yahweh Yahshua you know I don't have a name I can only describe him because he's that great so I say the most high uh, and this is just to inspire those individuals who have lost their life to these wheels of government uh, who are um, whose families are uh, still mourning and seeking um, damages of a black man in Louisiana two years ago is drawing more outrage. Today, the family of Ronald Green told CBS News it wants the officers held accountable. We get more now from CBS's Michael George. And a warning, the video is disturbing. I'm scared of your brother. I'm scared. Ronald Green is pleading with Louisiana State Police officers who wrestle him to the ground following a pursuit in May 2019. Taser, taser, taser. After excerpts were published by the Associated Press, state police released 40 minutes of body camera videos, which show Green being tased and punched from several angles. Officers say he continued to resist. Green can be heard repeatedly saying, I'm sorry. The FBI is investigating Green's death and what led up to it. But on the tape, Trooper Chris Hollingsworth is heard explaining what happened. I beat the ever-living out of him, choked him and everything else trying to get him under control. And the was still fighting and we were still wrestling with him, trying to hold him down because he was spitting blood everywhere. And then all of a sudden he just went limp. Green's family is suing the Louisiana State Police for wrongful death. They say the agency initially claimed Green died after crashing into a tree during the chase. CBS News has confirmed an autopsy report showed head injuries, a broken breastbone, and a torn aorta were factors in his death. Colonel Lamar Davis. Having, you know, contacted and, and spoken with the Green family, uh, I can feel their pain. The Louisiana State Police fired two of the troopers and suspended another. Last fall, just hours after learning he would be fired, Trooper Hollingsworth died in a single car crash. Michael George, CBS News, New York. You know, for wrongdoing, you know, and the title of this video is Who's Next? Because here locally in Louisiana, the list just goes on and on and on and on in the wake of Alton Sterling and in the wake of Ronald Green, you know, it's a mess, you know, and someone needs to step in. Someone needs to step in or we as a people, we need to step back to the most high. We need to step back. Well, we should be doing that anyway, but this is that evidence for you. If you've ever been wondering if you need to turn back to the Most High, this is what they're doing in the Judicial Department downtown. Uh, this is why, you know, people are doing time for crimes that they didn't commit. And these videos are showing that. Uh, you know, uh, my condolences to the family of Ronald Green, you know, my condolences uh, to the family of Alton Sterling, you know, all those uh, individuals who were wrongfully convicted from um, detectives destroying evidence, going into the evidence room, uh, you know, framing people, women who've done three years uh, without uh, you know, due process, uh, civil rights being violated, and this is a continuous thing. This is business as usual here downtown at 19th JDC. And uh, there are good judges, there are fair judges, and I have met them, but I met them in city court. This is state court with uh, Judge Bo Hickenbacker. He has the power to sentence people to death. You know, that's power to me. You know, and when you are. Uh, wielding your power, you know, uh, irresponsibly on the bench, uh, falsely accusing people uh, when everything is recorded, 
it just goes to show the boldness of the corruption here. Without this surveillance camera footage, no one would have known how Jason Acree got into this black safe in 2018 after executing a search warrant on an apartment in Baton Rouge. The video obtained by the investigative unit shows Jason Acree exiting the apartment and slamming the black safe eight times on the concrete before the top finally pops open. He's proud of himself. Attorney Franz Borgart knows Acri from cases he's prosecuted in the past and watched the video the investigative unit obtained. That kind of behavior is emblematic of the belief that they can do, that individual believes that he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants to do it, which is consistent with the allegations against him right now. Court records show when the evidence was taken out of that black box, Acri reported $5,860 inside. In addition to Borgart, seasoned legal experts told WBRZ Acri's actions need honest answers. Proper procedures, probably nowhere in the BD, BRPD manuals, includes lock safe, throw it on concrete four or five times until it opens. Prosecutors say Acri's credibility is now tarnished. It led to more than 600 drug charges being dismissed against defendants this year. It all started when narcotics officer Jeremiah Ardwan was arrested for possession of stolen things in December. He cooperated with investigators, which led to Acri's arrest for stealing drugs out of the evidence room. So it certainly begs the question, what are the things we don't know about? It begs the question, what were all the times that an individual said this officer did something, took something, planted something? And we don't we can't prove it other than the person who was arrested is accusing. As the investigation progressed, Acri was arrested again for obstruction of justice a few weeks ago. The district attorney telling us it's been challenging to determine when the alleged corruption began. But this timestamp video from 2018 captured rogue behavior at least three years before Acri's arrest. I think you have to look all the way back to when he started and then more specifically when he started doing narcotics. Baton Rouge police say the video of Acri is concerning and the case remains under investigation. The video you just saw is from a three-year-old drug case that did end with a conviction. Acri does not have a scheduled court date yet. Sylvia. Chris, thank you. Well, this could be the... Because I haven't seen nobody call me. I've contacted the Justice Department in D.C., the United States District Attorney Office of Louisiana. Nobody's contacted me. These entities should be at the American people's uh, disposal when it comes to justice, you know, but um, as of right now, no one's contacted. Qualified immunity is a doctrine that was created by the United States Supreme Court in 1967. The doctrine shields government officials from liability for damages claims even if they violated the Constitution, if they've not violated what the Supreme Court calls clearly established law. When the Supreme Court created qualified immunity, it did so in the terms of the court to protect from liability all but the plainly incompetent or those who knowingly violate someone's rights. There's an ongoing vigorous debate about whether qualified immunity is important for police officers to have. The Supreme Court in the early 2000s decided a case in which they held that lower courts deciding whether an officer was entitled to qualified immunity had to do two things. One is that there needs to be a constitutional violation. Do the actions of this officer violate a constitutional right, yes or no. That officer may still be entitled to qualified immunity by virtue of the second inquiry, which is whether or not that right had been clearly established at the time of this now decided upon violation. There needs to be a prior court case holding the conduct unconstitutional, sufficiently similar in factual terms to the case before the court that the factual circumstances of that case would inform the defendant that the conduct was unconstitutional. So uh, this is inspiration for all of you to just, uh, you know, keep your eyes on the most high because uh, he's definitely looking and he's uh, watching down and he's definitely 
gonna deliver us all. Uh, stay strong, you know. Uh, I, like I say, I got till July the seventh for an unconstitutional trial, which I don't call a trial. I call it a lynching in my words. So, uh, like the title of this video, who's next?